Well, welcome to another unboxing. And uh, if you didn't gather it from the music, which had kind of a southern flair to it, and uh, we didn't see a lot of the pictures. There's more pictures of this, uh, this beautiful town that the owner of this machine comes from. And it's none other than Winder, Georgia. Winder, Georgia. W-I-N-D-E-R, Georgia. And these are just some of the shots when I typed in Winder, Georgia. Some of the shots of that uh, town. And uh, looks looks real, real quaint. Not too far from Atlanta either. I think it's around 50 miles. But some real pretty shots of uh, the downtown area. And I've done this a couple times before. You might remember where I'll highlight uh, the town that the machine has come from. Where that owner comes from. Because I think it's just kind of cool, you know, to learn a little bit more about the community where that machine normally calls home. It's a beautiful home, isn't it? It must be one of the uh, real pretty homes in uh, Winder, Georgia, down where uh, Gloria Andrews comes from. Gloria Andrews is the one that sent this machine, and... Uh, just from our little bit of contact with each other as we were preparing things and she was getting information and reviewing packing videos and all of that, um, we just had a chance to get acquainted a little bit and she is just, just has the beautiful charm that you would expect from a southern lady, you know what I mean? So it was really a pleasure to, uh, to talk with her. I don't know if some of these are actual pictures or if they're maybe just uh, facsimile pictures. That's obviously a real picture of one of the homes in uh, uh, Winder, Georgia, right off of Highway 274. Looks like a lovely community. If anyone wants to Google uh, Winder, Georgia, W-I-N-D-E-R, and tell us something interesting about the town, and even some basic stuff like... Uh, What's the population of the town? When was it established? Give me three interesting facts. Three interesting facts about Winder, Georgia, where Gloria Andrews calls home. And uh, if you're the first one to do it in the chat, I'll send you something special. Looks like a gorgeous community, doesn't it? Look at that house. That's a big house. Good gravy. You always kind of expect the bigger homes in the southern regions, don't you? Plantation style homes and... You know, I think we're just gonna... We're kind of stuck in the mode of homes now. Lots of homes that they're gonna be showing us. That must be the downtown area near the courthouse maybe, or city hall. Actually, you know what it says at the bottom? It says plastic surgery Winder, Georgia. And maybe that's a medical facility that was converted or something. I have no idea. Cool old gas station there. Well, we could go through probably a, a million photos. A million photos of Winder, Georgia. W-I-N-D-E-R. But we're going to move forward with the unboxing. And as you may have gathered, Gloria was listening when I mentioned during one of the premieres that I got a kick on of people packing with newspapers, particularly the funnies or the comics. And so she made it a point when she sent, uh, not this main box, but she sent a secondary box that had, and here's a big hint, had some cams in it for this particular machine, and she packed it with these funnies that I opened up with uh, at the beginning of the premiere. And yes, I read them all. And I don't know if you, as we were scrolling by them, I don't know if you had a chance to read them or not, but, uh, but I just, I, I grew up with comics. It was always a battle of the fittest. It was like a B.F. Skinner episode every single time we would hear the closing of the box outside to signify that the newspaper had been delivered. And my older brother, who was four years older than me, he and I would always spring into action and see who, who could get to the door first and get out the door first and get down the sidewalk to capture that newspaper. And even when I won sometimes, being a bigger brother, he sometimes would manhandle it from me. Oh, man, I need counseling. I need counseling. It was horrible. But 
<laughs> I think comics are just a hoot, and especially with this coronavirus thing that we've been battling for so many months now, all of us need a little bit of a chuckle sometimes. And some of the comics, they really do tickle your funny bone when you read them. They're just so, they just hit home, don't they? Don't they just hit home? And all of us have our favorite comics as well. So I, I know. You could probably, in the chat if you wanted to, type one of your favorite comic strips of all time. And you know what? I'll, I'll give you another deal here. If you're the first one to type a comic strip that you just loved as a kid, and maybe love now as a big kid, as an adult, if you're the first one to type that comic strip name in the chat, I'll send you something special. Two contests already, for goodness sakes! Two impromptu contests already in this premiere, and we're only about, a, gosh, only like, what, 10 minutes into it, maybe? So, uh, but I'll give you another hint on what might be in this box. And that is, it, it relates in some way to Dr. Singer. So that tells you that's probably, probably a Singer sewing machine, right? All right, guys, I'm going to move you to the side. We're going to move forward. I know you're not a baby, Dr. Singer. I just had to move you. Mr. Bean, I'm going to move you down by your sewing machine in case you have a project you're working on. And we're going to start moving forward, moving forward. And that first tune you heard is called, uh, what is it called? Don't You Bite Now? Don't You Bite Now? I think that's what it was. Let me just check. Ah, uh, no, that wasn't it. It was called Mika. Mika. Mika was the last song that we just did, kind of a southern song. The next one we're going to do now is called Don't You Bite Now. I'm not making these up, folks. How could I? All right, let's get into this unboxing of this machine sent from the great state of Georgia, specifically Winder, Georgia. Winder, Georgia. I wonder if it's windy in Winder, Georgia. What do you think? It might be. And I'm going to re remove my funnies from the front, my comics, so I, I might be able to read them again. You never know. Boy, look at the thickness of that pad. That's got to be, what, about a good two and a half inches thick? Nothing at all is going to be able to impact that machine from the top, not with a pad like that. And it's not rigid either. Look at that. Gloria is downright serious about wanting to protect the top of that machine. We'll, sh we'll see how she does on the rest of the packing. But that is a, that's a beautiful pad, very, very effective in safeguarding her machine, whatever it might be, right? <laughs> All right, the next one is called Buckeye Bonsai. Buckeye Bonsai. I 
almost like furniture, furniture pads, like the furniture guys will wrap furniture up with. Just kind of sitting up there. It looks like it's used around the edges as well to fill in the cavities. If I start sneezing, it smells a little bit dusty. If I start sneezing, it's it's not coronavirus. It's not. Dr. Singer's giving me a clear bill of health. like she used a, a thermos on the inside of here almost like you uh, like you would take on a picnic or something so yeah I don't know I don't know what this is gonna do for the machine but maybe it's just to create a little bit of extra space so that that real big pad on top didn't move around at all feel for how this is set up. I've got enough space in the front. I'm probably going to open the front of this box like I've done on some others so that we can uh, get at it a little bit easier. Why don't we do that? I'll just set my, my uh, thickness so that I don't cut too deep. See, we can open this like a can opener. stubborn little piece right there and just in the nick of time just in the nick of time right as that music was coming to an end and I never I never listen to these pieces in advance so I have no idea I know the length of them but I don't track the length so I have no idea when they're going to start or end so I don't know what this this must be just kind of looks like it's just kind of extending over the top of the box so it's just creating a little bit more a little bit more cushion and a little bit more protection from downward force on this. But the outside of the box, when I looked at it, looked like it was in real, real good shape. So coming from Georgia to Wisconsin, there was nobody in a real bad mood that decided they were going to abuse it, at least from what I could see from the outside. All right, so this next one is called Moss, Moss Wood, Moss Wood. might just lift straight up with a little bit of persuasion maybe <clears throat> may have to kind of cut it down the middle here. oh it's taped on the side too okay extra padding in the side that uh, Gloria put in there. Extra cardboard just to kind of create a little bit of a barrier from a side impact on the, the box. So not a bad idea at all. And I love it when people recycle things. On the front of here it says, Mom's Room Books. 
So there you go. There must not be books needed in the box anymore. Otherwise, we'll have to come up with another solution. Sounds terrible, doesn't it? Like I'm breaking something, but it's just the it's just the sound of the styrofoam. These are real good as far as shock absorption. We've seen these before that other customers have used to pack their machines with. Super, super idea. close we're getting very close closer anyway let's see here how many peanuts do we have decide whether I have to get a, a tote to put them put them in I don't know if we're gonna have quite that many it's kind of hard to see at this point All right, I'm not looking at the chat, but I am guessing, I'm just guessing, that you are probably saying, okay, you've only given us a few real broad clues. You said Dr. Singer's out there, so it's probably going to be a Singer sewing machine. And uh, you haven't given us much else to work with as far as guessing what this machine might in fact be. All right, I think that's fair. I think that's fair. So here's what I'll tell you. I'll tell you that based on what the customers told me, and you remember historically, sometimes customers will get it wrong. Okay, so based on what the customer told me, and my understanding of which make and model this is, it is a singer. And I'll give you another big clue. It was not made in Elizabethport, New Jersey. It was made at the other factory that I've referred to many, many times in relation to this particular type of machine. Another huge clue. This particular machine started in production in 1956 and it went until 1961. Those are huge clues, folks. I'm practically giving it away. Practically giving it away. <laughs> All right. Put on some more music before I before I go into a, a, a spell of giving all the details away. Once my computer comes out of sleep mode. Once it comes out of sleep mode, well it's coming out of sleep mode, I'm gonna grab a box to put these peanuts in. a lot of peanuts here but but we will get a box to stick the ones that are in there in there so all right almost got it almost got it just in time for the computer to come out of sleep mode so And I know those are fall colors, right? I actually uh, just shipped the machine back. Or I shouldn't say shipped it back. I shipped uh, the 201-2 out to 
Super B in Las Vegas in a container very much like this. Okay, so the last one was Mosswood. The next one is called Reasons to Hope. Reasons to Hope. Well, those are words of wisdom in this corona craze time, isn't it? Reasons to Hope. Here we go. <laughs> That is some serious padding that uh, Gloria built around this machine. And I love these things, they're like puzzle pieces, see that? Sort of like puzzle pieces, but they're, they're not coming apart. They're not coming apart! <laughs> I'm not looking at the chat, so I don't know if you guys are typing any guesses in. I gave you some great clues. I gave you some really, really good clues on this machine. That is, if you were listening, if you were paying attention, you got those clues that I gave you. You want me to give them again, just, just so you got them? Okay, the clues again is, it is a Singer sewing machine. The next clue is, it was not made in Elizabethport, New Jersey. It was made at the other plant that I've talked about numerous times. Oftentimes I'll talk about these two plants uh, interchangeably that Singer had on the East Coast. And the next clue is this particular machine was made from 1956 until 1961. Okay? Those are some real good clues, folks. Real, real good clues. All right. Let's see here. That last one was called, what in heaven's name was it called? Reasons to Hope. So the next one is called, uh, and some of these we've heard before. Matter of fact, we've heard them recently. They come up in the search under Southern, which is what I typed in. So this one is called We Ride. We Ride. <laughs> One of my new toys. play a song at it but not to this no way these guys are moving too fast for me
box. Happy box. He almost jumped away there. Alright, I think I can lift it out at this point. Give it a try. So that's like a box within a box within a box that Gloria did. A fabulous uh, packing job. Plus, there's an added pad down on the bottom as well that's probably as thick as the top one, about two inches thick. So, uh, an A plus as far as uh, packing from my friend down in Georgia. Excellent job. All right, let me move this out of the way. Good tune. That was a real good tune. We've heard that before. Letter, what is it called again? Letter ride? Or We Ride? It's called We Ride. Well, I was trying to jump in. I've got this new Chrom Chromonica Super, Super, the, the Super R Chromonica by Honer, which is a great brand, Harmonica. And I just picked this up and I've been goofing around with it a little bit. I had a marine band type harmonica, and many of you probably did as well growing up as kids. They're so much fun, and uh, I wouldn't claim any mastery over this uh, harmonica yet. It's a beautiful harmonica, too. You can kind of see that, and it's got this little doodad over here that you can push in and change the tones of it and everything. Uh, but it's just uh, it's going to be a lot of fun to try to learn it, a lot, and probably a lot easier than my banjo. Remember seeing my banjo way back when on one of the premieres? And I was trying to figure that thing out, too. But uh, this one I picked up a little tune on it already. Let me see if I can play it. I'll, I'll give it my best shot, okay? All right. practice needed obviously more practice needed but this is so great uh, harmonicas are so much fun and they have such a a classic part of our history because they're so portable they're so compact and they've been a part of everything from out on the plains back in the day when you know we were conquering the west and just all over the place they've been such a joy to people so hopefully i can figure out more about it and learn how to play it and maybe share a little bit more of that with you in a future uh, premiere so all right oh we've heard this next one too backwoods barbecue we've heard this one a couple times here we go That guy can play guitar, let me tell you something. That guy can play guitar. All right, and if you uh, receive something packed like this, make sure you point those blades away. Point the blades away so you don't slip and puncture through it and damage uh, the machine on the inside.
That is probably one of my favorite tunes. All right. Let's... Oh, I don't think I don't think we've heard this one before. I, I would have remembered the title. It's called Crush. Crush. Let's hear what this sounds like. <laughs> Oh, I'm getting down to the machine. I can see the top of it. All right, another big clue. Another big clue, if you haven't already gotten it. It was the second machine I should say was the immediate machine to follow the big sister to the featherweight. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good clue. Hard as you guys are, I'm sure you've gotten it by now. Plus, I've given you some awesome, awesome clues, right? Awesome clues. All right, here we go. We're down to the, down to the wire, as they say. Don't you wonder where that saying came from? Down to the wire. All right, here we go. Maybe it's like for somebody that was, you know, dealing with a bomb. You know, maybe like a bomb squad. We're down to the wire. Is, do we cut the red one or the blue one? I'm colorblind. I can't tell. I'm not colorblind, but maybe that bomb squad guy is. All right, here we go. The final layers on Gloria and the machine that she sent. You can pretty much see it through there. Gloria Andrews is a very good packer, isn't she? I would say out of five stars, I would say about 4.5. For sure. It's a very good packer. All right. So what is our next tune? We did Crush. Now we're going to do Triumph. Triumph on the Prairie. Here we go. got a real clear shot of it now. What do you think? Hey, that's a harmonica. And he's got the little wah-wah thing too.
Well, let's take off this final little layer that's on here. And then we're going to check out Gloria's machine even closer. And if you guessed that it is a Singer 401A that was made where? Anderson, South Carolina, right? Anderson, South Carolina, because of that A, the A stands for Anderson. And you're spot on. on the prairie that's got a beautiful harmonica piece in it and i was actually hitting some of the notes who knew that is so cool that is so cool all right the next one is called swampland swampland so here we go taking off that final layer so we can take a real close look at gloria's 401a All the way from the great state of Georgia. See that? Very smart idea. She put these over the spool pens. I told you these spool pens notoriously always get snapped off on the slantomatic machines that have them on top. They just get snapped right off. All right, let me take out that stuff in the middle and then we'll kind of go around Gloria's incredible 401A. So this is underneath the presser foot. I'm not sure if this is uh, some of the sewing that Gloria did recently. Combination of uh, straight stitching and kind of a zigzag, modified zigzag on the bottom. And it looks like she has different thread colors, unless she did this in different layers. She's got kind of an orange color on the top and then a white on the bottom. All in all, I'm seeing pretty good stitch balance. But you know, whenever you use it, this color thread, uh, orange is, Orange is such a, a difficult color to see, depending on how you're, uh, you know, what kind of material you're sewing on. It's just real tough to see. So this is kind of where we're starting right here. This is where we're starting. And uh, Lisa gives me a barometer of uh, what the machine is doing now. And uh, we'll also see if we can plug this machine in as well. Gloria said there was some sort of a concern or an issue with the foot controller. And um, I just reread her note uh, just in the last couple of days. And um, she had read somewhere online about uh, issues with foot controllers and, and um, oh gosh, all the particulars and, and when I explained to her that the foot controller that should be with this machine doesn't even have resistors or components built into it. It's a direct wired type foot controller. She was like, oh, okay. So uh, we'll see what we have in this uh, little bag right here. I'm guessing it's the foot controller. 
And I think she had said she took it apart a little bit, so we'll see if it uh, if it works. Oh yeah, I see that. The screws, see on the back of it? The screws and the little rubber feet are missing off of one side of it. So this may be uh, something that works right now with the machine. It may not. So we'll see. Find out soon enough. And I don't see the other little uh, rubber feet for it. Or the screws. So they must be, uh, they must be missing. We can take care of that. We can take care of that. All right, so that was swamp, swamp land, and uh, and a lot of these we've heard before. I know that. Uh, this next one is called an army of none. An army of none. So this is making me a little bit cautious because I know it's been a part. Well, we got a fire extinguisher. We might give it a try anyway. <clears throat> I'm just going to do a quick test on this power cord. Seen the so the power cord is uh, is wired and giving electricity. So we'll try this to begin with. At least we can test the light if the foot controller doesn't work until I can uh, repair it. So we'll see. All right. So that should give us power to the light. We'll see. Yep, we got power to the light, so let's let's see what happens now when we plug this foot controller in. I hate to say it that way, but when you get something like this and it's partially taken apart and the owner's already mentioned a concern about it, and uh, I think what she had read online was something about maybe the capacitor had gone out on it or could go out on it, and, and we've talked about this on this channel before where when you plug a machine in and you have the foot controller plugged in and it starts running right away. Matter of fact, we recently had that happen on that uh, Type 8E that I got and I had to flip out the uh, foot controllers because the uh, resistor went out on it. So we'll see, we'll see what we see. That's kind of, that needs a little bit of TLC, doesn't it? I think I'll brush that off before I plug it in so I don't set lint on fire or anything like that. And I just use just a simple little, this is actually labeled as a Smith Corona brush that I've gotten. It's a vintage uh, brush that you used to use to clean off typewriters with. And all of you that are too young to remember, you can Google Smith Corona. Smith Corona used to be the, I mean, they were the go-to when it came to typewriters. They were the Cadillac of uh, typewriters. All right, let's see what we get here. This should be exciting. I hope not. Plugged in and it's not running. 
remember whenever you're going to test a machine like this make sure you have that uh, presser foot in the up position so that that presser foot is not grinding against those feed dogs okay all right let's see what happens here we go I'm going to push this button and it was nice knowing you so something on this side of the machine. I don't know if you can hear that through uh, the camera or not. The camera's pretty good on sound. Listen again over here and if we have to we'll come off the tripod but listen over in this region over here if you can. Here we go. Something is loose over here. I don't know if you can. I can hear it because I'm like right by the workbench. But if you can't hear that, something is def something is definitely loose over here. So I'll be curious to get this machine back on the workbench as soon as I can and uh, see what we find. I'm just gonna real quick pull the top off. If you have a 401A, there's only two uh, little bolts that hold the top on. Then you can remove the top and. Uh, and you need to do that to properly service the machine. Uh, but I'm also doing it so I can listen a little bit better. This cover kind of mutes the sound maybe a little bit, and maybe if we take the cover off we can hear where that sound is coming from uh, a little bit more clearly. Plus I'm going to uh, I'm going to also see if uh, Hold on a second. Let's come off the tripod. Get you a little bit closer to the machine so we can listen to it together. Okay? So again, when was the 401 made? Remember me mentioning it leading up to us unveiling this uh, in the unboxing? Between, if you said 1956 and 1961, you're absolutely correct. 1956 to 61. So right around five years, right? I think that's about five years, isn't it? So let's take this lid off. And, and don't freak out if you do this for the first time. The lid is kind of what holds the, uh, the door closed on the front of the faceplate. So as soon as you lift this, boing, it pops open. So I'm going to set that back here. We're going to push on that foot controller again, and then we're going to see we can get closer to that sound. I'm already seeing rust. I don't know if you can see rust in the machine as well. And that could be a real good clear. We've got rust right there, rust over there, rust back there, rust on there, rust on the cam stack. See the cam stack? It's got rust on it as well. Rust down in here. Where was I looking? Right over there. We've got rust over here where the wire comes off. Right over there. There it is. And that's not just varnishing, that's that's rust. That's rust. So Alright, so let's push on the foot control again. I'm just gonna check this real quick. Yeah, this machine's gotten a fair amount of use. The uh, the worm gear that comes out of the top, again, this, this machine is going to be mounted with a vertical motor. Uh, it's going to be 0.9 amps. And uh, the motor basically is mounted vertically right in this uh, chamber of the machine, uh, just to the left of the balance wheel. And then it juts up with this worm gear to the top that interlaces with the balance wheel. So, and the, the balance wheel worm gear that uh, interfaces with it is actually a Teflon material. I don't know if you can see that uh, in the shot or not. And it obviously needs some cleaning and servicing. 
And then typically on a 401, if it's original, uh, this worm gear right here that comes out of the top of the motor is going to be metal. And not all the uh, Slantomatics have a metal worm gear that comes off the top of the motor. Some of them are a Teflon material, very much like the balance wheel. So that's another, along with a bigger motor, again, the standard Slantomatic is going to have about a 0.54 amp motor. Uh, the 401A, like this, comes with a 0.9 amp motor. So this, this machine actually, if you can imagine as you're looking at it, and again, a machine that only weighs about 5 pounds more than the Singer Featherweight, this machine comes in right around 16 pounds. Featherweight, obviously, is 11 pounds. So, uh, and this machine is going to have basically more than, well, not basically, it's going to have more than two times the power of the Featherweight. It's going to have more power than the Singer 201-2. And it's also got the benefit of the, of the direct gear positive traction. It's going to have more power than the Singer 1591. It's going to have almost as much power as a lot of the FOF machines that come in right around 1 amp to 1.1 amps. So uh, don't be deceived uh, by this, oh, it's an aluminum machine and it's you know lightweight. Uh, no, not even close. Uh, this machine can sew with the big boys uh, very, very easily. Once it's running at the top of its game... And I don't think we're there yet. So let's listen again and see if we can hear that sound a little bit more clearly uh, with this lid off. Well, I'm guessing you can probably hear it through the camera, but that is not running like it's supposed to be running. Uh, not even close. So uh, I'm glad that Gloria sent it in. I'm glad that I have the opportunity to, uh, to get this uh, 401A running like it's supposed to run again and eliminating some of those sounds and certainly mitigating uh, all of the rust uh, that is in this machine as well. And we're only seeing the tip of the iceberg here. Uh, it's evident just from this vantage point, but there's obviously a lot more rust and there's probably more rust on the bottom of the machine as well that we're going to have to mitigate as well. So what do you think, Dr. Singer? Yeah, I agree. What he said is, we've seen this before. No big deal. We'll take care of it. Yeah, I agree. Totally. So... This is Glorious 401A. Again, sent from the great state of uh, Georgia. And uh, again, if you were one of those folks that was the first to post with uh, either one of the impromptu little contests that I did, uh, make sure you reach out, because I'm not going to reach out to you. 
uh, you'll have to reach out to me and then uh, I'll go ahead and uh, uh, send you something special for coming out of the shadows and uh, for uh, answering the question correctly. Oh, I hadn't noticed. We're looking at the back of Glorious Machine real quick here. Beautiful decal. Look at that decal. It's just beautifully intact. But then we have one of these ugly, nasty stickers that a sewing center stuck on the back of her machine. Let's see who it is so that if one of y'all decides to call them and say, what the heck are you doing to Glorious Machine? You've got their name and you've got their number right there. It looks like they're out of uh, Pennsylvania. So this machine must have at some point been in Pennsylvania. It's obviously now calling Georgia home. But uh, I'm dead serious. If uh, when I, Whenever I show these nasty, ugly stickers, and, and at least these folks had enough out in Pennsylvania, had enough common sense to put it back on the back of the pillar. They didn't do one of those dumb, dumb things like put it right here on the inside of the pillar facing the bed or worse yet, they didn't put it like on the front of the machine right here or up here. A lot of them will love to stick it up here as well. So if you decide to call these folks, like I said, if you record it and you give me, uh, give me the video link or whatever so I can share it, I'll send you something extra spe special. But in this case, you want to be kind of nice because... They didn't do a horrible job of sticking it in a place that is just so ridiculously conspicuous and, you know, you know, audacious of them to do it. They stuck it kind of discreetly on the back of the pillar right here. So uh, they had a little bit of common sense. So if you call them just, hey, you know, what's, you know, blah, blah, whatever you decide you want to say, just record it, send it to me, and I'll, I'll send you something super special. So... Just look at her, the back of her machine as well, since we're right here. And just look at that bed. The bed is surprisingly clean. There's not a lot of marring on it. There's not a lot of uh, signs that there's been a huge amount of sewing done on this machine. Check our throat plate. I hadn't checked that yet. Yeah, it's a little sticky. See how that's not all popped? That's not popped all the way up. These have a little piston on the bottom of them, and I bet you there's rust on those too, so they're not moving freely. Yeah, that should be up another probably two, two and a half more millimeters. So, yeah, I'll take care of it. And with a little bit of assistance from Dr. Singer, we'll get it done. Right, Dr. Singer? Yeah. We'll totally get it done. And talk about belated. This marks the beginning and the end of this class because we're at the finish line. So thanks for watching this unboxing again from uh, the great state of Georgia from uh, Gloria Andrews. Um, and no, she's not one of the Andrews sisters. I don't think so anyway. And any of you that are really young and don't know who the Andrew sisters are, holy mackerel, were they, uh, they were three ladies that did some incredible performing. And a lot of the performing was done for the troops. Uh, they would travel around with the uh, USO and do a lot of performing for the troops. And they, my goodness, could they blend their voices. So you can check YouTube and type in Andrew sisters and listen to some of their singing. Woo, woo, boy, can they sing. They can really sing. Fabulous singing. All right, well, God bless, and uh, remember, you're never old until regrets take the place of your dreams. So hang on to those dreams, and more importantly, yeah, you, took, you, you finished it already. You know what I was going to say. Take action on it. Take action on your dreams and make them happen, right? So take care, and uh, stay tuned. One of the next premieres you see will be in Tulsa, Oklahoma as I visit my friend WK down at the museum because the date has been rescheduled. So watch Facebook for those posts and watch YouTube for those videos, okay? God bless. Take care.